All right, I need everybody on 161. Is everybody there? Austin? Good, sir. All right, now, um, I told y'all last week that to get the answers correct on 162 and 163, you had to read through 161, even though there aren't any, like, questions on it, you know, gradable pieces. talk about houses real quick houses do houses all have the same structure or do they have different structures <laughs> they obviously have different structures okay uh, you know some houses will be um, you know two stories some will be one story some have two bathrooms and two or three bedrooms and some might have one bathroom and two bedrooms or some might have five bathrooms and ten bedrooms I guess depending on how many kids you have all right, so that's how houses are structured, all right? If you're going to buy a house, and all of you are going to have a home one day, okay, that you have to pay for yourself, you're, there are going to be things that you desire from your house. If you're married, and you and your husband feel like, okay, we've already got one kid, we're probably going to have another one in a couple years, then you better have at least three bedrooms. That's one for you and your husband, and then one for each kid. All right? And you might even want to have an extra bedroom in case you ever have people go visit or some, you know, or in case you have another kid one day, right? These are just things you have to think about. If you say, Mr. Richmond, I'm just going to always live by myself. I like it that way. Then you know, I don't need a big house, right? So when you go looking, you just choose the structure that you need. Do you think you need a two-story house, 10 bedrooms, live by yourself? No, you don't. But the structure of the house, the, uh, that, that means the components within it. How many bathrooms? How many bedrooms? How big is the kitchen? If you're going to have a big family, you better have a big dining room, right? So that is structure. Well, poems also have structure. The structure of a poem is the way it's put together. Now, I'm going to ask y'all, how many of you have written an essay before? Just be like a one-page report or maybe a two-page report. It doesn't have to be long. The question's not over. Put your hands down. I know you've all written essays. How many of you have written an essay or a report and thought about the structure of the report? I think you're, you're, you're all wrong. I'm going to tell you an example. How many of you have written a report, and let's say the teacher needs it to be two pages, and you get to the end, and it's only like one and a half pages? All right? We've all had that happen, right? So what you do is you go back to each paragraph and you might add a word or two here or there so that it will bump down a line. You'll have like a, a little, like one word that takes up a whole line. You've done that? So you have concerned yourself with structure before. You'll have like one word taking up a whole line or two words taking up a whole line. And you'll do that all the way through until you do that for four or five paragraphs and then you've stretched out to two pages. Understand what I'm saying? So that's a structural issue. Well, it's the same with poems. Poems have different pieces of structure. Rhyme scheme is part of their structure. And we've talked about rhyme scheme. We've talked about rhyme at the end of lines. We've talked about internal rhyme. That's rhyme within lines. Okay? The number of stanzas. That deals with structure. Um, the length of the poem. Is it one page long? Two pages long? 25 pages long? That deals with structure. How the poem is put together all deals with the structure. Understand? Just like how a house is put together all deals with the structure. Now, I want you all on 161 to look at the second paragraph that starts off, authors also think. Y'all with me? Our so authors also think about the structure or organization of their texts. Poets, for example, consider what the ordering of words brings to a poem's meaning and style. A highlighted poem, excuse me, a highlighted, a lighthearted poem will likely have a different style and structure than a serious one. Poets may arrange word in stanzas or groups of lines with a pattern of rhyming words and a strong rhythm, which is the pattern of stressed and unstressed syllables. So I want y'all to look at this poem right here, 161, The Pasture. It says The Pasture by Robert Frost. By the way, Mr. Richmond. No one wants to leave. They love English. I'm sure they do, but he has to, he has to leave today. His mom's here, and it's Reese. Come on. Come on down. You're the lucky one. He ain't lucky. 
These kids are crying. Reese. Excuse me? I said these kids are crying. They feel so sorry for Reese that he has to leave. Okay. See? Y'all have a good Friday. All right. Thank you. Reese, I'm going to post this on Canvas. You need to watch it later. Okay? Have a nice uh, life. Now, everybody, look at the structure of this poem. We're not even going to read the poem. Look at the poem, though. The pasture. What can you tell me structurally about this poem without even reading it? Alana, tell me something, boo. It has words that look like they rhyme. It has words that look like they rhyme. I didn't know something could look like a rhyme. I thought it had to sound like a rhyme, but okay. You're making this too difficult. Look at the poem. Somebody else, tell, tell her something. There are two stanzas. You don't have to read any words to see there are two stanzas. Can't you see the space in the middle of the... Stanza is a paragraph of poetry, right? So we can see the space in the middle. So we know we got two, two stanzas. What can you tell me about each stanza? There are four lines. There are four lines in each stanza. So without even reading the poem, we can see a little bit of structure. We've got two stanzas. Each stanza has four lines. That means we have a poem that is eight lines. Is this a long poem? This is not a long poem. This is like a one bathroom house, right? Like one bathroom and the rest of the stuff's like, you know, a little bitty bedroom and a little kitchen. That's all you got. You don't have a living room in this place, all right? So we're going to read this. And I want you to think about what it means a little bit, but I'll, I mostly want you to pay attention to other elements of structure, pieces of this poem. We've already figured out we've got two stanzas with four lines per stanza. John L., you need to read loudly, okay? Go ahead, baby. I'm going out to clean the pasture spring. I'll only stop to rake the leaves away and wait to watch the clean water, or watch the water clear, I may. I shan't be gone long, you come too. I'm going out to fetch the little calf that's standing by the mother. It's so young, it totters when she licks it with her tongue. I shan't, I shan't be gone, you come too. Thank you very much. Okay, okay. Um, what else did you notice structurally about this poem? Little components that make up the structure. Not necessarily what it's saying, but things that make up the structure. Uh, Go ahead, Christian. The second and third one line, like the second and third line in stanza one and, and stanza two rhyme. In stanza one, line two, away. Line three, may. Away and may, right? Yes. And go down to the next stanza. Young and tongue in the second and third lines, right? So in each stanza, lines two and three rhyme. That is structure. Okay, without paying attention to any, anything that the poem says, we've got structure. Away and may, young and tongue. There's another really obvious piece of structure here. Hold on. Brandon, what is it? Um, they both have the same last line. They both have the same last line. I shan't be gone long, you come too. Okay? Yeah. They both have the same last line. So there are four things right there we've noticed about the structure. We've got lines two and three of each stanza that rhyme. Each stanza ends with the same line. There are two stanzas. Each stanza has four lines. These are pieces of structure. Y'all understand? Does anybody else see anything structurally about this poem? Brennan! Um, they both start with, I'm going out to. You know what, Brennan? I didn't even notice that. You're right. Each stanza, how did I not notice that? Each stanza starts with the same four words, I'm going out to. Thank you, Brennan. Yeah. Now, let's continue. Let's go down, and we are going to discuss what it means in just a second. Let's go down. It says, now reread the poem, mark any rhyming lines with letters, underline repeated phrases. Who marked the rhyming lines with letters? Alana, thank you. Janelle and Caitlin. And Mr. Richmond. I told y'all to do this, people. You got to follow the directions. And it says underline repeated phrases. I did that, except not the one he noticed. I don't even know how I missed that. It says, how, how, did the, how does the poem's structure contribute to its tone and meaning? Is the poem style lighthearted or serious? Let's stop and answer that. Is this, is this poem lighthearted or serious? I think it's rather lighthearted. This doesn't seem like a really serious poem. I mean, we got a guy who's going out to rake some leaves and watch a mother clean its calf with her tongue or something. That doesn't seem that serious to me. 
It's just a little thing you wanted to write about. Then it says, the poem's sing-song rhythm contributes to its carefree tone, as do the rhymes at the ends of the second and third lines in each stanza. So when it says sing-song, sing-song, that means you kind of have a syllable stress. Dot, da, dot, da, dot, da, dot, da, dot. Da, dot, da, dot, da, dot, da, dot, da, dot. The dot, 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 the dot. That's sing song. So I'm going to read it sing song, and you kind of did it. But I think what the thing is saying here is that we need to even put a little more stress. So I'm going to I'm going to read it. I'm going out to clean the pasture spring. I only stop to rake the leaves away, and wait to watch the water clear. I may, I shan't be gone long. You come too. I'm going out to fetch the little calf that's standing by the mother. It's so young. It totters when she licks it with her tongue. I shan't be gone long. You come too. Okay, so still, I mean, we just don't have a serious poem. I don't think you'd write a, a, a sing-song rhythm about somebody who just, you know, died. You know? Now, look at the word shant, by the way. Shant. Kylie, tell your friends what shant means. I know you've been wanting to share this with your classmates. Not and what else? Should it? Should it not? No. Somebody tell tell her. Shall not. Shall not. Oh. Shall not. Shall not. All right. Okay. It says when reading poetry, take note of how the po how poets use structural elements to build a poem. Look, structural elements to build a poem. Structural things to build a house because a house is just a structure, right? So just like I I tried to explain to you at the beginning. Number of bedrooms, bathrooms, size of the living room, size of the kitchen, the car part, right? Same deal here, structural elements. Reading a poem out loud a few times can help you identify its rhythm, understand its overall style, and gain a better understanding of its meaning. Now, we're about to move on to the next page and read something, but I need to tell y'all, and this is the darn truth. This is the truth. Matter of fact, turn, turn the page. When it comes down to structure, I can only show you how to notice certain things. First of all, you can notice how many stanzas there are. That's really easy, okay? That's a piece of their structure. That's very important. Is it possible to have a poem that's only one stanza? Yes or no? Yes. Absolutely, okay? Sometimes you might just have one. Sometimes you might have two or three stanzas. So one thing you got to notice about a poem is the number of stanzas. The next thing you notice is the length of stanzas. Do stanzas have to be the same length? Can you have one stanza that's two and another one that's eight? Yes. Absolutely. Okay. Another thing you can notice is how long the poem is overall. Is it half of a page? Is it five pages? Those are all structure. All right. Then once you read it, you can notice the rhyme scheme like you guys noticed. All right. Or if a word repeats or a line repeats or a phrase repeats. Okay. So those are all pieces of structure that you can notice. But then I'm going to be real with you. A lot of times you're going to have questions, including some of these that are like, in what way did the poem's structure contribute to its overall meaning that helped the author express her theme? I got to be real with you. I don't even know the answer to that question. I just know they ask questions like that. Okay. So the only, by the way, you got to, you have a test on this Tuesday. Oh, I know. Right. It's on one of the computers. You gotta love it. Okay. The only thing I can do, I can't tell you to figure out. Oh, well, this stands. This this thing has two stanzas. It must be a happy poem. <laughs> I don't know. All I can do is show you how to identify the pieces of the structure and then figure it out as best you can. Okay. So that's that's the best we can do. So figuring that out now. Let's look at this next one. Hope is the thing with feathers by Emily Dickinson. Look at that title. Hope is the thing with feathers. Right there. Hope is the thing with feathers. What is it saying hope is? A bird. A bird. Yeah, it's a bird. It's a bird. Does that sound like a positive image or a negative image? Hope is a thing with feathers. That sounds positive to me. Yeah, it sounds positive to me. Anything to deal with hope, right? If it said grief is a thing with feathers, I, that would not sound good, but hope sounds good. Well, let's look at this structurally. Without even reading without even reading any of the words. Christian, tell me one thing about this poem, sir, structurally. Uh, it goes A, B, C. Without even reading it. I don't know how you're oh. doing that if, you re if you're not reading it, sir. 
there's three stanzas. There are three stanzas. That's right. Give me another detail without even reading it, Christian. There are 12 lines. Give me another detail, Christian. Uh, Tell him, Elijah. There are four lines per stanza. Four lines per stanza. All right, Christian. Um, so hope is the thing with feathers. By the way, so we have, we are comparing hope to a bird. What do we call that when we compare things like that? Hope to a bird. Hope is a thing with feathers. Illusion. An illusion. No. But it does start with an A. We talked about it at the same time we talked about illusion. That's why you got them confused. Okay? We talked about it actually before we went to Mardi Gras. Start with an A. Second letter is an N. What? Analogy. It's an analogy. It's an analogy. Do you want to read? All right, hold on. I've got to put the camera. Do you mind being on the camera? Oh, your, your face is covered up anyway. Nobody cares. Hold on. I've got to think this spin around. I can't get it to spin around, John. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Hope is the thing with feathers that perches in the soul and sings the tune without the words and never stops at all. And sweetest in the gale is heard and sore must be the storm that could abash the little bird that kept so many warm. I've heard it in the chilliest land and on the strangest sea, yet never in extremity it asked a crumb of me. Okay, thank you very much, Janelle. All right, so we've got our short poem. All right. Three stanzas, four lines per stanza. Hope is the thing with feathers. Um, look at it. Hope is the thing with feathers that perches in the soul and sings the tune without the words and never stops at all. Where does it say, talking about with a person, right? Where does hope live? In your soul, in your heart, right? In your soul. It says, and sweetest in the gale is heard and sore must be the storm that could have asked the little bird and kept that kept so many warm. Okay. Sweetest in the gale is heard, and sore must be the storm that could abash the little bird that kept so many warm. So it's saying hope is a bird, right? I think is what it's saying is sore must be the storm that could abash the little bird that kept so many warm, saying, Who would ever put down someone else's hope? Who would do that? Man, I just hope I can get into college. No, you don't stand a chance. Who would do that, right? Sore must be the storm. Next, I've heard it in the chillest land and on the strangest sea, yet never in extremity it asked a crumb of me. Does hope ever ask anything of you? No, no, right? Hope is free, man. Hope is free. I mean, don't you guys have, have hopes of doing great things one day? You know, whatever, whatever your goals in life may be, you have hopes. And that's completely free. All right? Now, let's look at the rhyme scheme to figure out this poem. Look at the rhyme scheme. First stanza. Do we have any rhymes? Christian doesn't know because he's not looking at his book. He's looking at me. Yes, sir. He must like my sweatshirt. I do. Thank you. Thank you. It's a hoodie. Did you find any rhymes in the first stanza, Christian? Uh, the second... In the, fourth line. the second and the fourth line, we have soul and all. Soul and all. They don't rhyme 100%, right? But they're pretty close. They're like halfway rhyme. Do y'all know what that's called when something halfway rhymes? This is real. This is a real literary term. When something halfway rhymes, what's it called? I got some Valentine candy if somebody can tell me. Gummy jujus or whatever they are. <laughs> Sour gums. No one knows? No. If something halfway rhymes? Half rhyme. Uh. <laughs> Tried, you bunch of doofuses. You should have guessed. It's called Half Rhyme. Now, you know, y'all heard songs like that, right? They can't quite get it to rhymes. They put a word that's close to it. Half Rhyme. Look at the next stanza. Stanza two. Brad, do we have any rhyme in stanza two, sir? Um, heard, bird. heard and bird. Lines one and three of stanza two, right? Five and seven overall. What else? B Rad? Warm and warm. Yeah, lines two and four, six and eight overall. Good job. So in, in stanza two, we got a lot of rhyming. Caitlin, stanza three. What do we have? Um, see and 
there's something else. And extremity. Yes. Mm -hmm. So we have three lines in a row that rhyme there, right? C, extremity, me. All right. So different. This one is not set up like the the pasture. All right. Now look at the question. It says describe or the the assignment. Describe how the structural elements of hope is the thing with feathers impact its meaning and style. Now, be honest with me. Who mentioned stanzas in your answer? Who mentioned stanzas? I did. I better put my hand up. Yes, Maya did. Zach did. All right. Good, good, good. Who mentioned the number of lines per stanza in the answer? I did. But aren't those part of the structure? Right? Who mentioned the rhyme scheme? Okay, rhyme scheme is part of structure. Okay? If something rhymes, it's probably going to be kind of a happy thing, right? Yeah. All right. I need somebody to read me their answer. Thank you, Maya. Read loudly, honey, so they can hear you up here on my recorder. The poet Emily Dixon uses the stanza itself separate the ideas. She compares the birds to hope with all the meaning and uses words with similar sounds to carry a puzzle style. That's a great answer. That's a great answer. If you couldn't hear it on the recording, she said that she used stanzas to separate the meaning of what was happening in each section, kind of like in a paragraph, if you wrote in, writing an essay, right? Paragraph one might be one topic. Paragraph two is a related topic, but a little dif different. And paragraph three is another related topic, but a little different. Same thing. That's a great answer, Maya. Who else wants to read? I need a dude to read. Jaden, my dog. Read loudly, sir. The structural elements of hope is a thing with feathers, impacts the meaning and style by including a rhyme scheme that starts A, B, C, D. These, well, this rhyme scheme has words that create a feeling or a lighthearted tone due to the rhyming of B and B for the second line and the fourth line. That's not a bad answer. It's not a bad answer. I wish you'd have mentioned the stanzas and stuff, but that's not a bad answer. I'm going to read you what I wrote. The structure of hope is the thing with feathers is three stanzas, four lines per stanza. I always think the easiest thing to, to notice is obviously the, the stanzas. You know what? When they throw you a softball, hit it. Okay? It gives the poem a style of solidness. It's by the book. My opinion, its structure is the opposite of its meaning, which is one of freedom. Now, I want you all to notice, incidentally, how all three of our answers were, were pretty different. Okay, but we all got a piece of it right, I think. That's what I'm saying about structure. That to one person, the poem's structure might have one type of meaning, and to another person, it's got a different type of meaning. Okay? Structure's kind of hard to, to teach as far as, I mean, we can notice it, but it's probably, what does that mean overall? I don't know. Next up, Dream Deferred. I love this poem. Um, Zach, what does the word deferred mean, sir? That's right. It's something that you put off. What's the problem of deferring things in life sometimes, guys? You might never do it. Nah, my man, you might never get a chance to do it again. That's right, Garrett. You might not get that chance. Good for you. Yeah. Look at this. Dream Deferred by Langston Hughes. You ever heard of this Langston Hughes guy? Yes. Yeah. Where'd you hear of him? Parliament. Sir? Yes, yes, yes. He said Harlem Renaissance. We've read a story this year. Remember, thank you, ma'am. The lady and the, the teenager that tried to run by and steal her purse because he wanted the blue suede shoes. Remember that? Mm -hmm. Langston Hughes wrote that. Okay. You want to read it? Sure. All right, hold on. Let me get the camera ready. We're bringing back Janelle. Okay. All right, hold on. There she goes. <laughs> What happens to a dream deferred? Does it dry up like a raisin in the sun or fester like a sore and then run? Does it sink or stink like rotten meat or crust up, crust and sugar over like a syrupy sweet? Maybe it just sags like a heavy load or does it explode? All right, thank you. Now, um, let's look at the structure. How many stanzas? There are four. Thank you, Garrett. Garrett's been paying attention. Who thought there were three? Come on, don't lie. There you go. Okay. Yeah, but that first line is by itself, isn't it? 
That means it's its own little stanza. You can have, uh, by the way, what's the shortest a stanza can be? One word. Okay? You can have a one word line, which means you could have a one word stanza, right? Yeah. So this one is four. Are they all the same length? Are the, Caitlin, are, the, are all the stanzas the same length? Which one's the longest? Um, deferred. Really? What happens to a dream deferred? That's the oh, longest? No, no. Um, she must be thinking about price. No. <laughs> the second stanza, are any of them the same length, Ka Caitlin? No, no. Really? She must still be thinking about price. <laughs> I'm pretty sure the first one and the last one are the same length. They look like one line to me. I don't know. Can you count to one? Huh? I'm going to ask you again. Are any of them the same length, Caitlin? Yes, She's red right now, if you can't tell. Yeah. <laughs> the first and last lines. I mean, the first and last stanzas are the same length. They're each one line. Let's look at this again. What happens to a dream deferred? Does it dry up like a raisin in the sun or fester like a sore and then run? Does it stink like rotten meat or crust and sugar over like a syrupy sweet? Maybe it just sags like a heavy load. Or does it explode? Um, well, was this person, what do they say happens to a dream deferred? What do they think happens? You think it, it dies? Well, yeah. Kind of does. Look, does it dry up like a raisin in the sun? I think that means to give up. Okay. Then it says, or fester like a sore. What are they saying it does there? I mean, it starts with an R. This is, this is all symbolic, right? If you really wanted to do something and you never did it and it bothered you, what would you what would you use that? What's the word we have to describe something that you wish you would have done that you did not? Regret. Yes, that's it, Callie. Yeah, you regret it. You regret it. Like coming to Mr. Richmond's class without your work and he makes you get in the front. You start regretting it, don't you? <laughs> Except for one person. It's just part of the daily routine. <laughs> All right. Does it stink like rotten meat or sh or crust and sugar over like a syrupy sweet? Maybe it just sags like a heavy load. That's another example of regret, right? Like you're always carrying this burden, this thing in the back of your head, like I wish I would have done that. Or does it just explode? Now, we've noticed that we have four stanzas. We've noticed that the first and final stanza are the same length. We've noticed that the second stanza is the longest. What other do we notice about this structurally? What about rhyme? Do we have any rhyme in it? Yes. We do. Oh, wow. That was a difficult question. All right, Nikel, give me some rhyme, baby. Um, sun and run. Sun and run. That's right. Give me another one, Kylie. She's thinking. Come on, Kyle, you can do it. Elijah, help her out. Oh, sun and run. Sun and run. Awesome. We already said that. <laughs> Woo. <laughs> Give me another one, Kylie. This girl is good at rhyme. <laughs> Give me another one. I don't know now. <laughs> She's only good for one rhyme a day. <laughs> Brad, Elijah, one of you boys, tell her something. Sore and over. Sore and over? I like not wait. I don't think sore rhymes with over. Meat and tell sweet. Tell what? Meat and sweet. Meat and sweet. Golly, that was so... Kylie, can you see that one? Yeah. Meat and sweet. She sees it now. Hold on, let's go back to Kylie. Kylie, I'm going to give you one. Look toward the bottom. Load. What do we have that rhymes with Load. Oh, this girl, that's two rhymes in a day. I want y'all to notice something else. Notice the words that rhyme have question marks out to the side of them. A student pointed this out to me during first period. Look, sun and run both have question marks, right? Meat and sweet, question marks. Load doesn't, but it rhymes with explode and explode does, right? So just notice that. Also, look at all the question marks in this thing. It's full of questions. That's, those are things you can notice question marks without actually reading the poem, right? It's got like five question marks. Let's see. Deferred, sun, run, meet, sweet, explode. Six question marks. So that's all part of structure. 
Does this person seem to think it's a good idea to put dreams off? I don't think so. The first poem is about hope, right? The second part is about, the second poem is about not following through with things that you hoped to do. So they're rather opposite, aren't they? Now let's look at this. Hope is the thing with feathers. Structure. Alana, what'd you put for structure for hope is the thing with feathers? I put this. For, oh, I put it has figurative language. Did you give me any examples or just put some words there hoping I would not look at them? Hope you would get called on. Is that what you did? No, I just put figurative language. Okay, give me some examples. Somebody help this girl out. Tell her some structural things about... Yo, Garrett. There's three stanzas. Thank you. And four lines in each stanza, right? There we go. Let's go back to Alana. Alana, give me some structure for Dream Deferred, baby. It has four stanzas. Oh, this kid. She's learning. Four stanzas. Tell me something else, Alana. The last and first stanza is just like one line. Uh-huh. What else, Alana? She's getting it. Caitlin's over there erasing everything she wrote. The middle stanza has like seven lines. That sounds good. What about rhyme? Do both poems contain rhyme? Contain rhyme? That's something they both contain, right? Now, look at the bottom. It says, using the chart, compare and contrast how each poem's structure contributes to its meaning. Who wrote and actually answer the question about how the structure contribute to its meaning. John L., did you? I did, but I don't think it's correct. You know what? We're here to learn. Like, I know it's not correct. Uh-oh. Let's hear it, John L. Because whenever we went over it. Hold on, do I need to put the camera up by you? No, please don't. Just speak loud there. I'm going to put the camera on you. In the chart, both poems have three stanzas. I need to change That's not, yeah, it needs to say three and four, but okay, at least you noticed that there were stanzas. She just put there some figurative language and ha, ha, ha. <laughs> Emily's poem has more rhyme and rhythm than Hughes is more offbeat. I agree with that. Continue. This contributes by making Emily's more, Emily's meaning more calm and makes Langston's more meaning rough. I can deal with that. I Continue. Can, I need to add to it, but that's all I have. Okay. That's not a bad answer. It's not a bad answer. Do not refer to the authors by their first name, by the way. You're not friends with them, are you? Yes, sir. They're dead. I figured you weren't, but who am I to say? I'm going to read Grace Ann Marie Wilson's. I thought her answer was rather exceptional. In the first poem, Hope's the Thing with Feathers, it has three different stanzas and four lines with rhymes and half rhymes. It has a light and uplifting structure that shows the reader that hope will be with you forever and won't go away, unlike Dream Deferred. that has four stanzas, no equal number of lines in each. It has a sharp and deep tone that causes the reader to feel and know that the dreams are not forever and that we will find new ones and get new dreams. Okay? That was Grace's. I didn't think that was bad. You know... Looking at things and saying, somebody says, well, look at the structure and determine the author's meaning. I don't think we can 100% do that. But I think we can look at the structure and recognize similarities between poems and differences between poems. And we can certainly recognize rhyme schemes, lengths, understand? Sometimes they do do it to be choppy. Like she said, the first one was chopped up into three sections, right? So, so that, was, that was purposely done. We have this section, section two, Section three, it was divided purposely. That was a good thing that you noted. All right, do we have anything else that you guys would like to discuss? What is it, Christian? You don't? I thought you did. All right, uh, what time is it? 1026. 1026? Okay, I wanted to read another chapter, but we just don't have time. This is going to conclude our lesson. Uh, we have a quiz on this stuff Tuesday. All right, that's it. You can pack your stuff.